Welcome to my channel. I'm the Dark Lord of Optics, and what I bring you here is a thinking man's take on guns and optics with occasional forays into politics. Thank you for being here. All right, folks, the topic of the conversation today is the Kola BD2 XD 6.5 by 32 uh, binocular. The binocular itself is interesting. I've been using it for the better part of this year. Um, this is one of those long-term reviews. I've mentioned the binocular before, and I figured it is a, a good idea for me to talk about it in a little more detail. Although, kind of like with my last binocular review, which was the Vortex Razor UHD 10 by 50 this one is surprisingly difficult. And it's surprisingly difficult, really, because I really like the binocular. And there's very little to compare it to. I like to uh, compare different optics to similarly configured stuff from other manufacturers. And here, there is very, very little. So before I talk about the binocular itself in terms of how I liked it and the performance and things like that, let's take a quick look at the specs. And it's really almost the only semi-direct competition it has, which is really the Maven B3 6x30 binoculars. So the specs are here. As a matter of background, there is an interesting thing in that I tend to like low magnification binoculars. I tend to like them for general purpose use because they're fairly lightweight. If I'm, you know, I'm big and fat, if I'm hiking uphill and I'm all winded, uh, a, a lower magnification binocular is a good thing. And uh, there are not that many of them. And up until now, my real go-to low mag binocular has been the old, now discontinued Vortex Viper 6x32. This particular one is a 6.5x32, so just a touch more magnification, but not a whole lot more. So for me, it's in the same uh, general range. Um, if my Vortex Viper was going to die, I would have switched to the Maven B3 6x30, which is nice and compact, and it's a very high quality binocular, it's about 500 bucks. And while it is, you know, somewhat unusual choice, uh, per se, Maven makes for a very nice binocular. I think it's Japanese parts and they claim it is assembled in the uh, United States. It's pretty, you know, it's nicely styled. And then I stumbled onto this uh, Koa that somehow uh, the existence of this binocular I completely uh, uh, ignored earlier. So what is BD2? BD2 is Kova's wide-angle binocular, and if you look uh, carefully at, at the specs here, you see that this sucker has a field of view of 10 degrees. My old Vortex Viper, I didn't put it in the table because, you know, it's discontinued, was 8 degrees. To give you an idea what it means in terms of how much, uh, the coverage at a thousand yards, a 8-degree binocular gives you about 420-degree field of view, kind of like a Kova YF Poros, and a 10-degree field of view binocular uh, gives you a field of view of, uh, what was it, 525, uh, whatever's in the table, right? It is a huge, huge difference. And the apparent field of view is correspondingly uh, much uh, larger as well. These guys have 65 degree apparent field of view, which is very, very good. In terms of decent quality compact binoculars of this size, really, other than these Kowa and the Maven, there isn't much. Um, the other two binoculars I have on the table are the much less expensive Kowa YF2 6x30, which is 100 bucks. And for 100 bucks, it's an amazing little binocular. It's the same exact thing that uh, Leopold Yosemite 6x30 used to be. Uh, same way I'm in China and all that, but they're nicely made. Uh, I like them. I've given them a, a ton of them to various kids and all that because they're easy binoculars for younger guys, uh, for kids to use. You don't need to patch around with the focus as much, and they're not very expensive. But kids don't break them a whole lot, so they are sturdy enough. And the other binocular that's kind of in the ballpark here uh, that I put on the table is the Steiner uh, Navigator 7x30. I happen to have that one as well. That is an individual focus portal, right? Like here you have this center focus signal that focuses both barrels. In the IF, individual focus uh, binocular, basically each barrel is focused individually. You set it up for some reasonably distant uh, focus and you don't touch it. And that's why if you look at the specs, the close focus uh, for the individual focus binoculars is usually in the 60 70 foot range, depending really on the depth of field. The nice thing with those, we, they use them a lot for you know maritime stuff where you don't want to pass with focus. You just bring them up to your eye, and there's a lot of depth of field, and everything's in focus. And the Steiner Navigator is, is, is a very nice binocular. 
um, I took a Talask and it, it worked great there. Uh, but uh, for general purpose observation, you really want to be able to do the uh, center focus if you want to look at something close, or butterflies, birds, uh, you know, explore something not far from you. And these do focus down to four and a half feet, which is uh, very good. So far, I've used them for general observation, hiking and things like that. I've used them uh, as archery binoculars because the distances are not that large when I'm you know, out there with a bow. But the wide field of view, especially when you're comparatively close, actually makes a big difference. You do see uh, a lot more. As far as optical performance goes, honestly, for 330 bucks, these things are amazing. They're literally amazing. Now, um, they are not perfectly sharp at the edges. The field of, on any really wide field of view binoculars, the edges are not going to be quite as sharp as the center, and that's sort of fairly natural to our eyes. Swarovski, for example, with the NLPers and others, corrects the whole field of view, and for me, it doesn't work all that great. It gives me a little bit of a headache, which is a personal difference, but it's in a technically amazing binocular. Here, the sweet spot is maybe 65-70% of the image, but the transition from very, very sharp center, and it is a very sharp binocular, from very sharp center to the slightly less sharp. They're not blurry, they're just less sharp. Edges is very nice and smooth and uh, uh, gradual, so it is a very natural looking image to your eye. The colors are nicely uh, uh, vibrant. This is not the highest contrast binocular I've ever seen, but the closest I've seen to this in terms of color in many ways was uh, Miopti used to make this Miopro 6x32, 6 and a half by 32 something like that. They discontinued, discontinued it. Unfortunately, in terms of color balance, it was fairly similar. Good colors, nicely saturated, but not crazy pop like you would get from you know, $3,000 Leicas. Very, very good. Resolution is also very good. There is chromatic aberration if you're looking at very, very high contrast objects and if you're looking for it. There's very little of it in the center. But, you know, on a bright sunny day, which this is not actually, I'm in California, I managed to find a rainy day in California. Um, on a slightly overcast day, I cannot simulate uh, chromatic aberration uh, for the life of me. And like, I've been sitting here trying before I started recording the video. I'm looking at the tree, branches and leaves right against the skyline. I can't see chromatic aberration. My eyes are quite sensitive to it. I'm, I'm very good at finding it. On a super bright sunny day, if you have a black dark object uh, silhouetted against the sky, you can simulate, you can find a little bit of chromatic aberration in the center, but it's hard. Toward the edges, you see a little bit more, but once again, it's not enough where I pull a binocular up to my eyes, and there it is. No, I actually have to specifically look for it. In other words, the chromatic aberration control is really, uh, is really good enough. The... Uh, distortion, I think there is a tiny bit by the edges. I'm looking at the edge of the building. There's a slight amount of pink cushion distortion. And to me, it looks just about perfect because when I pan, um, there is no distortion, right? There is something called the rolling ball effect. When you pan with binoculars, if they're perfectly correct, when you pan, everything looks like it's a little bit of a rolling ball. Here, there is, they dialed in just enough uh, pink cushion distortion. Pink cushion is when the edge is the very... Straight lines at the very edges look like they're curved in a little bit like this. They have dialed in just enough pincushion to compensate for the rolling ball distortion when I pan. So if I'm out hunting and I'm just trying to slowly pan, everything looks absolutely perfect to me. And if I'm out looking at a bird or exploring something, this slight pincushion distortion toward the edges uh, does not bother me. Okay, The eye cups are fairly large. For a binocular of this size and that's sort of what you need uh, to have a uh, wide field of view binocular while maintaining pretty decent eye relief and the eye relief on this one is pretty good i wear contacts sometimes i wear glasses i've used these binoculars with contacts and with glasses uh, without any real problems the eye cups themselves are quite sturdy uh, there are four positions all the way in two intermediate positions and all the way out um, the nothing has fallen off, nothing has loosened up. The resistance on both barrels is very good. Remember, I've been using these for about a year. Um, the two most used binoculars this year for me was this and the previously mentioned 10 by 50 Razer UHD, depending on the terrain. 
and honestly uh, this held up exceptionally well the focuser is comparatively light cover by binoculars tend to have focuser that's slightly lighter than i like but there is no real hysteresis i'm not seeing well maybe a tiny bit i'm not really seeing any backlash the full focus range of this thing is about one and a quarter turns so what is it uh, about 450 degrees yeah just right one and a quarter turns so it's maybe it's a little bit on the fast side on other side and because the binocular has pretty generous depth of field dialing in focus is pretty straightforward right so it's not a razor shallow focus of high power you know 1820 power binoculars at six and a half power so you can just see a lot of stuff especially you know further out without messing with the focus if you need to dial it in it's pretty straightforward from that standpoint compared to the fast focus uh, for binocular of this magnification is a, a good idea in terms of weight size packaging it's very much par for the course and it's kind of just small enough where it's easy to have with me. I don't need to uh, do anything different, anything special uh, with it. Um, mostly larger binoculars I tend to have in a chest carrier. This guy, half the time, you know, there is a case. I just clip it to my belt, pop it in there. I've carried it around my neck. Now it's set up very short because my kids have been using it. It's just a very easy and user-friendly uh, binocular. Beyond that, there's not that much to say. There is a... Uh, are, there, are there means to hook it up to a tripod? I have not tried it because the big advantage for me of a binocular of this size and this magnification range is that it is so, so easy to handhold. Even if you're windy, a little shaky, tired, uh, for prolonged observation, which I've got quite a lot of with this guy, um, it works exceedingly well. I really don't have anything bad to say it costs 330 dollars i think that seems to be the street price and uh, up to now or uh, recently i mean if you wanted the six power binocular my standard recommendation was either the hundred dollar koa yf the you know inexpensive poros or the 500 dollar maven well i mean if you only have hundred dollars to spend the yf is still you know the way to go but aside from that between this and the Maven, honest, I'll pick this every time. It's less expensive. Image quality is excellent. Field of view is wider. Size is about the same. Maven is a pretty binocular. You know, I think it's the way they did the styling, you know, is really excellent. But in the current market, if you want a six power binocular, I mean, this is pretty much the one to get. Um, the one knock on it, I suppose, is that it is made in China. So Kowa makes binoculars in both in Japan and China. Their Japanese line is called Genesis. And if you want an 8 by uh, 30, well, 8 by 33, they, uh, but look, I think Genesis is probably the best kept secret of the binocular world. Generally very, very underrated binocular, especially given what they cost. Um, but if you are okay with the Chinese made binocular, all of the BD2 binoculars are made in China. Most of them have freakishly wide field of view not all cuts a couple other models are wide but not ultra wide uh, these are absolutely ultra wide uh, if you're okay with chinese made binoculars this is it i mean i think for 330 bucks it's center performance of the bd2 about as good as a maven b3 very very close maybe slightly better but it's in a ballpark sample variation but the field of view is substantially wider. The Maven is 8.8 .8 degrees. So this guy is 10 degrees. I mean, that's a significant difference. And one of the things it does is that because the apparent field of view is larger, the view is more immersive. It also becomes somewhat easier and more natural for your brain to process it. Because despite being magnified, it's a little bit more uh, similar to what you would normally see. Aside from that, I don't have much else to say here, guys. Um, if you're looking for low-power binocular, I can't recommend this thing enough. It's been awesome, and the alignment did not budge, despite some fairly rough treatment. The rubber housing did not change. Uh, the um, individual eye focus is a little scale here, so I know what it's required to for me. The resistance is just right. I've changed it multiple times for other people using it. Then got it back to the way it's set for my eyes, and it's always perfect. So I have, I unusually, somewhat unusually, I don't have anything bad to say. There is almost no 
a competition for this guy and for 330 bucks once again um, this is a very very easy recommendation for me and it's absolutely going into my list of recommendations during the next update thank you for watching thank you for listening subscribe to my channel or visit my website doclordofoptics.com i do appreciate your time thank you